Hey, what's up guys? It is that boy Kyrie here and today I'm back with another video. We're going to be looking at this black pillar named Wheat Waffles and if I were to describe him, he's kind of like the king of the black pill on YouTube. And uh, in this video, he's going to be talking about what he views the sexual market value and how to calculate it. And today we're going to tear this video apart. Let's get into it. There's a big difference between your face rating and your SMV rating. Your face rating, as it says in its name, is just how attractive your face is. Okay, and uh, this is the first part where we're going to be like, okay, well, uh, hold on a minute there, buddy. So one, he doesn't rate from one out of ten, like most normal people do. He rates one to eight, right? So keeping that in mind, eight in his mind is a ten, right? But that being said, if an eight is a ten, right, like in between each step, right, from one to eight, it would be 12 and a half percent. So you'd have to be 12 and a half percent better to be the next rating up, right? And if we were to look at all these guys that he's showing on the screen, right? So I, I would say like pretty conclusively, like this guy is pretty conventionally attractive. So like, okay, we'll give him the eight. Um, these two guys, right? Or really these three guys, like I'm not really seeing much of a difference between the three. So, uh, yeah, like this this guy on the left here, this guy in the middle, this guy on the right. Realistically, they're all in the same tier. And then this guy down here, right? Like he doesn't have like any like bad facial acne or anything. Like he has like maybe one or two bumps. And then like, you know, like he has a pretty decent face. It's just that he has kind of droopy eyes, but like it kind of just looks like he's sleepy and like he did take a good picture. So he's probably not even a four, right? Out of his eight rated system, which like, Conventionally, if you're a four out of eight, that puts you like sort of like in the middle. These two guys would be in the middle. So these two guys would be like sort of like normal tier, or, like kind of like C tier type dudes, right? And this guy has, you know, like he has nice eyes and he has nice hair or whatever. This guy also has nice hair. So it's like, okay, well, bump this guy up a little bit. These two guys are about equal, right? These two guys are really these three guys are about equal in my opinion right um this guy he is not a three stop the cap this guy is not a three right here is this just a bad picture it's bad lighting whatever this guy should be bumped up to somewhere around four or five realistically if you were to just go by his face I, I haven't seen the rest of them right this guy and this guy right they, they obviously look quite bad in these photos and they look like they need to lose a little bit of weight but like that being said both these guys are not two and one. I'm not sure why this guy's rated a lot higher than this guy. Like, and also if this guy were to shave his like neck beard, so he were to trim the jawline, not the jawline, but like the neckline, and uh, sort of trim that, he would probably go up to like here. And for this guy, like you know, like that's kind of rough. But that being said, he's still not one. Uh, there's people with massive facial deformities, where like they're realistically going to be the one. And so this guy is not a one, but let's continue. While SMV stands for market value, which is not sure why he bleeped it out. Maybe, maybe, maybe he's trying to get some of that sweet, sweet YouTube money, but uh, let's continue. Is your overall score, including all factors of attractiveness. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to calculate both. First of all, interestingly, your face rating is part of and the biggest component of your SMV, in addition to lots of other variables that I'll explain later. Okay, uh, I'll let him explain these variables for us, but like, right off the rip, like, he puts so much emphasis on this, is because he sells uh, a face rating service. Right, so he puts so much emphasis on this. He doesn't put any emphasis on the other things. And, like, why the hell does location really matter? Let's be real. Okay, an IQ, what does it have to do with anything? Unless your IQ is, like, below 70 or something and you're actually retarded, there's no reason why IQ should matter. But let's go. This is why I believe there's always lots of confusion. Most people can estimate roughly what their face rating is from comparing themselves to these faces. In contrast, when it comes to SMV, because there's so many variables, 
People's estimations are often way off and can be as much as two to three points away from their true mark. So, to eradicate this confusion, let me introduce you to my formula of how to calculate your own SMV. Okay, and immediately we can kind of see here, like, obviously he's being too intellectual with things. So he probably scores super duper high over here, right? But like, actually I'll let him explain it first, but like, obviously, just looking from this, it's too complicated. Right? He's overthinking things, and like, you can see that um in like gifted students so when i was in school right like i was one of those gifted kids or whatever and a lot of times on the tests for those things that were considered easy i would i would get those questions wrong and it's because i start overthinking things and i think he's doing that here as well but let's continue hey. Now, at first glance, I know this chart looks like it may do the opposite of eradicating confusion. But trust me, the method is simpler than it looks and there's only a few calculations. The level of detail though is quite comprehensive, but it'll be worth it as this will give you the most accurate score, the only score you'll ever need. So to quickly explain, we have a bunch of variables of attractiveness at the top of this chart. So face, height, body, money, P length, IQ. The scores are filled in, then weightings are applied. Some calculations are performed to give your weighted total then geometrically averaged SMV. Then finally, at the bottom, two more factors are taken into account, adjusting your original rating to give your final SMV. So, Yeah, I don't know if I agree with like these two like additional factors. Ethnicity adjustment, that, that sounds like it's going to be some racist bullshit. And location adjustment, I'm not sure exactly what he's referring to. Um, but, like, we'll let him explain. So... How do we fill out the charts? Well, you get a score out of 8 for each of the top variables using this mapping. So if you're in the top 1% for anything, you score yourself an 8. Yeah, and then uh, obviously by this percentile thing, top 1% is an 8. But like if you were to sort of crunch the numbers, so to speak, like if you divide uh, 100 into 8, to be in each like rank, right? So the top 12.5% is an eight, the next 12.5% is seven and so on and so forth, right? Then these numbers are completely wrong. Like you don't have to be the top 1% to be the, to be an eight. You can be in the top 10%, you could still be an eight. And again, like there's no 10. So it's not like, oh, each 10% that you go up, you're like an additional, like, you know, like a number or whatever. But yeah, this, this, is, this is all wrong. If you're in the top 10%, you get a 7, top 25, 6, and so on. Starting with height, here is the height distribution of men between the ages of 18 and 20 in the US, and now here is the height converted to ratings chart. As you can see looking at this one, the height 5'11 is slap bang in the middle. No, not 5'10 or 5'9 because younger guys are slightly taller than the older generation. I myself am 5'10", so I'd get a rating of 4.5. Okay, and so right off the bat, right, if you're like six foot, right, like that's kind of like the desirable standard in today's society, right? So I will kind of give him half a point for this one. So he, he's, he's like half correct. In that like there's a lot of women who want somebody who's like six foot or taller right but that being said like there's a lot like the average woman is like five seven or five six right and so if you're a good like four or five inches taller this point doesn't matter and so if you're at least like five ten you're meeting like the minimum requirements for like most women like because most women are five six or below and they want somebody who's like a good like four or five inches taller so if you're like around here then it's fine if you're up here it's fine and if you're down here even it's like kind of fine and then like once you get below here like okay well maybe that's gonna hold you back so uh it's it's like sort of a half truth but like he uses this to quantify like what the perfect height would be and like the thing is like if you go to the 
other extreme of this, if you go to like seven foot tall, seven foot two, seven foot eight, does that make you better than somebody who's like six two or six three? No, I would say like the more like ideal height would be around here. And then it, once you go up from here, like you wouldn't go up in points. I think you would actually go down in points for most women. Next up is body. Now, it was a little tricky to find an objective rating system for body because there are lots of different variables that go into what makes a man's body attractive. So in the end, I settled for a combination of body fat percentage and BMI. Okay, well, uh, so immediately right off the rip, right? He has the chart of body fat percentage, BMI. It's not a chart, it's a little display. But he has body fat percentage, BMI, fat distribution, frame, and muscle mass, right? And I would agree. Okay, well, all of these things kind of go into making your physique, right? BMI, right? As long as you're above a certain point, I would say BMI actually doesn't really matter as much as muscle mass, body fat distribution, and body fat percentage, and then frame. Those four things are what matters the most, but you just choose these two things. Like, even if you're going to use all these arguments, right? Like saying like, okay, well, body is weighted this much. And so you need to like, look at body in this way that it's still inaccurate because, you know, if you have your body fat percentage and you have your BMI, it does not give you an idea of the fat distribution. Because what if you have like, I don't know, say a 15% body fat percentage, but like you have shitty fat distribution, you have a shitty frame, so like your your waist to uh, shoulder ratio is going to be off, and then that's going to give you a shittier frame inherently than somebody who has like the same body fat percentage and the same BMI as you, but like they have a better shoulder to waist ratio, and they store maybe more of their body fat percentage in their legs or something. So uh, yeah, like I would say like if you were to reduce it down to two. What you should go by is body fat percentage and muscle mass, not body fat percentage and BMI. But uh, let, let's let him explain this. Uh, maybe, maybe he'll save it. In the end, I settled for a combination of body fat percentage and BMI. The reason being is that body fat percentage gives a good indication of how lean a man is. Then BMI will give an indication of how bulked out you are given your height. So first, here is the body fat percentage chart for two types of tests and two age categories. I've then averaged them into one to ensure we are using the widest amount of data. So oh my goodness. So uh, one, I'm getting triggered because all the stats are for 18 and 29. It's not for older men. It's not for anybody above the age of 30. But two, even though it's not above the age of 30, right? We're going to zoom in a little bit. Okay. So he gives nine, like sub 10% body fat is the top 1%, right? He gives that an eight, right? And then he gives sub 13% body fat rate of seven, right? And then if you're like kind of in the 16 to 22 range, whatever, you get a six or you get a five. Okay. But as we're going to see here, right? If you're in the top 10%, you're just in the top 10%. Both of these guys should be getting an eight. And you have this guy who's at like 12.9%, whatever. Like I would say there's not really that big of a difference if you're looking at the two of them, like right off the rip and you don't know anything about bodybuilding, you don't know anything about anything between this one and this one. And I would say that if you're in this range, right? There's a lot of females who like, like the dad bod types and whatever. So like if you're around this range, you're actually going to be more attractive to certain types of women than if you're at this range, especially if you have a lot of muscle mass, right? And so none of this really matters. Like if you're in this category from where he has the eight to the six, because like if you have more muscle mass, but you're in a certain body fat percentage range so i would say up to like 17 percent you have more muscle mass and you're 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 in this body fat percentage range you're probably going to be seen as as attractive as these two types and these two types right like a lot of women would be like oh yeah this is too much this is like ridiculous you look you only go to the gym every day you look like you're a fuck boy and they're not gonna fuck with you right and so 
this should probably be like the ideal and then anything below here like you know obviously like these are kind of semi-accurate because this guy is probably not 27.3 percent there's no shot this guy is like probably closer to 22 percent than he is to 27.3 this guy is not 34.2 percent this guy is probably these two guys are maybe around 34.2 percent but like they're not like actually <laughs> like none of these guys are actually any of these numbers Right. If you know anything about analyzing like body fat percentage and like looking at that, like I've been working out for five years and I know what bodies look at look like at certain body fat percentages. This guy might be 39 or higher, but like, yeah, I'm not sure, like because obviously like your bone structure and he has to have some amount of muscle and all of those things. So he's probably at around like this range. This guy, this guy is probably at around this range. Right. Cause like you can see his arms a good bit. It's just that the fat distribution is probably mattering more for this guy because like obviously in here you can see that he has a, the rolls of fat or whatever, but like he doesn't have moves or whatever. And you, yeah, no, uh, to have moves you only have to be at around this range. And he doesn't have moves. He's got muscle mass. Right, this guy, you know, uh, that's rough. <laughs> and then this guy, he's not 27.3%. He just has a little bit of a pop belly. He has a bit of a dad bod, whatever. But he's probably closer to around here than he is to here. So this is the row you should be rating yourself on. I've also provided images at the bottom which you can compare yourself to. Importantly, you should only give yourself the corresponding rating if you are at least equal, if not leaner than the provided image. So, if you have the same or greater definition than this guy, and you believe your body fat percentage is 9.3% or lower, you score yourself an 8, that puts you in the top 1%. So, that's just body fat percentage. Now factoring in BMI too. Because, as you might have been able to predict, using body fat percentage alone has one major caveat. Skinny guys. Guys who have low body fat percentages, but at the same time whose bodies aren't all attractive in the eyes of women, due to their lack of muscle. And this is reflected in their BMI. Just a quick example, if I were to ask you which man on the screen now has a leaner physique, you'd say the man on the right. But, if I were to ask you which one is more attractive, in the eyes of women, you'd almost definitely say the man on the left because of his increased muscle mass. Yeah, uh, so like in extreme examples, I would say that this is the case. Right, so like if you're underweight, but like you're below a certain body fat percentage, okay. We'll give him that. So, half true, right? But, that being said, there's obviously like a point like over here where like that might be too much like even if you are extremely lean and you're like 290 pounds most women are going to say like oh damn like you look you're taking roids and you probably are for this category at least if you're like below whatever percentage body fat that he deems to be necessary so yeah i i, I think that like this take specifically of this guy being better than this guy is probably true but that being said, first of all, this guy is probably not 20% body fat. You can see his chest development. You can see his arms. You can see a little bit of vascularity, unless that's just like scars from self-harming. I'm not sure. So this guy is probably in like the 16 to 20% range, but like he's probably not 20%. He's closer to probably 18%. So debunked automatically. This guy... Yeah, he might be 14%. I'm not sure. He might be he might be even leaner than 14%, but like he just looks like a twig. I mean, he looks like he needs to like just eat something right quick, bro. Somebody please get this voyage sandwich, okay? So to factor in BMI, which three habits that cause God summer damn it, you too. Number one chart by plugging your height and weight. If you're already beneath 22% body fat and your BMI is between 21 and 22 then subtract half a point from your original score. If it's 19 to 20, then subtract a full point. If it's 17 to 18, subtract two points. 
And if it's 16 or less, subtract three points. Oh my goodness. Three points? Three points from being a skinny king? I, I don't know. I don't know if I can agree with that statement. But, yeah, 5'10 and 90 pounds would be below. No, 5'10 and uh, 110 pounds. Yeah, like that's kind of like really, really skinny. Like you need to go uh, see a doctor about that or something. That being said, so notice how he has like minus points here because he's like part of the incel community, right? He's part of like the black pill community. But he doesn't have plus points for if you're over this. Because, like, if you're below, like, 20% body fat, no, I, I would say it's even lower. So if you're below, like, 18% body fat, but, like, maybe above 10% because 10% is kind of, like, niche, right? Then, like, I would say, like, if you're above, like, a 22, 23, like, you should add points up to a certain point. So you could probably add points up to, like, here. So, like, where it says to, like, 29 or something. Now, just to clear up a slight confusion, you might be wondering why people with so-called healthy BMIs are getting points deducted. Well, the reason is because this colour scheme is mostly rubbish. See, I fall exactly here on the chart, in the healthy range. This is what I look like year round, and I get called on the slim side occasionally. Meanwhile, my friend Men's Maxing falls over here on the chart, actually in the overweight category. But almost all people would agree his physique is significantly better than mine. So ignore the colour scheme, I believe my own grading system is better. Anyway, that's it for body, now moving on to finances. For this, we'll be using net worth and yearly income. The data is again taken from 18 to 29 year olds. Oh my god. And for your rating, you should choose whichever you have greater of either two. Now, some of you might point out that for the bottom 30% or so of the chart, people's net worths are actually negative. Asking the question, how can this even be possible? One word, debt. The equation of net worth is the value of everything you own minus any debts you have. Oh shit, we got a Gordon Ramsay subscriber over here. God damn. And there's nothing saying this result can't be negative. In fact, for many of you watching, it's likely you've either been to or are currently at university, which requires taking out huge loans to finance the endeavour. This is why your net worth might be negative. However, to stop this from skewing the ratings, this is why I'm telling you you should pick the best out of either of these two. Okay, so the disagreement that I have with this is like, in the eyes of women at least, nobody gives a shit about your net worth if you're not married to them or if you're not like in an actual long-term relationship, right? So uh, the example I'll give, like I'll use myself, fuck it, right? I personally have a net worth of like $500,000. So that would put me in like, I don't know what the numbers are between the top 1% and top 10%, but I would assume that it puts me in the top 5% of people who are 18, 29 years old, right? So I have a net worth of 500000 because I have life insurance policy. And that, that that's actually included in your net worth. And then I'm like, I have a car and I have like whatever, right? So my net worth is at 500000 if I were to die tomorrow, my total amount of money that I would have would be $500,000, right? Meanwhile, in terms of income, I'm definitely not here. I'm like closer to here, like within the, these two categories, right? But by his system, that put me here. But women don't care about your net worth unless you're married to them. Because your net worth doesn't matter because they're not going to hear any of your shit. Right? So, because your net worth doesn't matter because they're not going to hear any of your shit. This number does not matter. It's irrelevant. Right? If you're, if you're going to give money a, a rating, then what you need to measure it by is disposable income. And that's going to depend very, very heavily on the city that you're in and where you're living. So, if you make 38 k right and you're kind of like in the top 50 percent whatever you're like you're like just sort of middle of the pack if you live in like i don't know like the undeveloped regions of florida or like 
the South or something like that, like a middle America state, going to be better off uh, than uh, if you li live in like San Francisco or something, you're making 65K. You, you, you could barely afford an apartment if you're making 65K in San Francisco. Let's keep it real. So in San Francisco, if you make 65K, you're going to be like over here. In terms of money and women who are looking for money and disposable income so what really matters is not your yearly salary it's not your net worth if you're rating it based off of like your attractiveness to women it's gonna be like your net income right and so like you have a net income of like not net income disposable income of like I don't know, like five hundred dollars a month, and you're gonna have enough money to take the the woman out on a date. You have enough money to get her some flowers. You're gonna have enough money to get her some chocolates, whatever. And that will put you at around here, like at the five to six category, right? If you have enough money to like take her out to, uh, I don't know, like whatever nice place that people like to go, Cancun. Uh, you know, like you can pay for trips, whatever. And I'll put you around here. If you're here at this salary range, you're more likely to probably be around here. But like if you have like massive debts that you're paying off. And uh, if you live in an expensive city, like this might not be enough. This might not be enough to be a seven in San Francisco. It probably isn't enough to be a seven in San Francisco. You're probably a piece of shit and you're, you're van lifing it or something. But like if you're making this and you're in like the South or something like that, then you know, like obviously you're gonna have the disposable income in order to spend it on, on your lady. Cause uh, women don't care about like how much money you actually make. They might care about like how much money you're spending on them. If they care about like that at all. And uh, I would say like not all women are like that in, in that regard. Because not all women really, like, need your money. Because, like, what if they're making a lot of money? Then things like your looks and how you make them feel is going to be more important. But let's continue. Because many people who went to uni might have negative net worths at the moment, but their incomes may show the opposite, and it's only a matter of time until they catch up. 90% of the top 1% earners have a degree while only 40% of the broader population does. Next, we'll be moving on to pea size. I know oh, some of you- So right off, right off the rip, right? And these are on to pea size, right? Into uh, 5.1 is average. Okay, whatever. I'll, I'll, I'll take the number at face value. I'm not gonna look up the number for what is average. Like maybe that's what it is in the UK. You know, like maybe it's rough out there. And then if you're six point seven, that's top one percent. That that I, I don't know if I believe that. Again, maybe maybe like the UK numbers versus like the American numbers are a little bit skewed. So like I'll give him the benefit of the doubt, and I'll say he's looking at UK numbers, or whatever. But pea size doesn't matter if you're determ determining your attractiveness generally because like you have to be able to whip out the pea in the first place in order for the PP size to matter, right? So like, if if you have this, but you don't have any game, you don't, you don't like have the looks, like this isn't gonna matter. So, and once you're to the point where you're whipping it out, as long as you're above here, or like around here, it's not gonna matter either way, because it's, it's already out, okay? That's all I'm saying. So like, if you, if you got like a three inch or something, okay, you know, like that's kind of a little bit rough, but like, you know, if you don't have a three incher and you're above like the 4.5 mark, I would say would be the cutoff of like, okay, well this is maybe a little bit accurate. Like this is like the yellow zone. If, you have, if you're about the 4.5 mark and you're already to the point where you're whipping it out, they're not going to be like, nah, bro, I don't want it. It's too small. Like that's not, that's probably not going to happen. But like I don't have any experiences with that, so like I can't really say for real whether or not uh, that would be the case. But like I would also argue, right? If you're this or above this, there's gonna be a certain amount of women who would be like, "Hey, yeah, this is too big. I don't want it." Like if you pull out like a fucking like 14 inch, or like they're gonna be like, "Oh goddamn, like that, that's rough." 
uh, you're, you're going to destroy me. And then they're going to be like, nah, bro. And so, like, if you have, like, a 14 entry, you're probably going to be down here as well. Right? There's going to also be women who, by the time you whip it out, whatever, they're going to be like, ah, oh, no, I don't want that shit. And they're going to reject you based off of that. So once you're above this sort of range, then they're going to be like, nah. <laughs> and uh, it's not going to be all women, obviously, but, like, it's going to be, like, a, a certain percentage of women. So, like, really the ideal would be probably here because, like, that gives less people a uh, reason to reject you. But, like, there, there's probably, like, 15%, 20% of women out there who, like... They're going to be like, no, right off the rip. Because it's too big, that shit's going to hurt. And then, not only is this kind of true, but I'm going to show you guys. Um, most women don't even like orgasm from PIV sex, right? Between 70 80% of women don't do it, right? So other things are going to play more of a factor. And so... That, that only uh, sort of contributes to this point that really it does not matter all that much because most women are not going to uh, be pleased by PIV suck anyways. You are used to using the imperial system and others metrics so you can find your score here in this chart. I saw war. Finally, let's take a look at IQ. Be careful not to flutter yourself here. Recently, I released this poll on the community tab of oh my, my channel. Alright, so, like, obviously here we have IQ. I would say, like, your IQ does not matter either way, right? Because, like, unless you're below here... Once you're, once you're below 70, then, then you get into sort of like Forrest Gump territory. Once you're below 65, then you're you're probably a downy baby. You're probably like literally retarded. And so you, you probably don't want to be down here. But like obviously 99% of people are not down there to begin with. And if you're like just a normal person, right? Statistically, if you're below like 70, you're considered weird, right? If you're above here, this doesn't matter. This doesn't matter in most cases. Like, most women are not like, oh, yeah, he's really, really smart. I want it because he's really, really smart. And you see this in, like, high school and you see this in, like, college and, like, really any other place because it's not like, oh, okay, this guy's really, really smart. He can, like, he's very articulate. He can, uh, you know, like, do math and shit. And that, that makes me wet, like, immediately. Like, that's not how most women are. There's, there's maybe, like, a select group of like very very niche women who are like that but like most women are not going to be like that bro uh, I, <laughs> so being 135 iq does not matter the only reason why this might matter is because it might influence your money and that might influence your disposable income right and that's really what the women are looking at. Uh, so a lot of women, like, it's, like, kind of a heuristic to say, like, oh, okay, well, I want a guy who's smart because he's going to make more money. Uh, and so, like, if you're up here, they might think that you might have more potential to make more money, right? And so, like, these ratings for these IQs is so, so mind-numbingly stupid and so bad that I, I question his intelligence from just this point alone. Uh, but uh, I think he would place himself probably up here because, uh, you know, he's he's pretty intellectual. I, I'll give him that. You know, he's getting the geometrically, uh, the geometrical mean of things in his calculation. So And unsurprisingly, way more people overestimated their score than underestimated. A staggering 14% of people believe they are in the top 1%. So I ask you... Yeah, I agree. Like, most people think that they're better than other people for whatever nebulous reason. And I know one lady who was, like, bragging about how her son had a 90 IQ rating, right? Unironically, because she probably believed that it was out of 100. She was just like, oh, yeah, my, my son has, like, a 90 IQ rating, and he's so smart. I don't know where he gets it from. And it's like, ah, I know where he got it from. Emotional damage! He's in the bottom 25%, you know? Um, 
and you think that that's a good score. But let's continue. You to be true to yourself, and once you've got this score, you should have ratings for every single variable. And now we can put those ratings onto our chart on this line here. And the next step is factoring our weightings. Weightings are given. Okay, so right off rip, I have problems with how these things were rated, right? Because, uh, you know, obviously face being the most important thing. I, I don't know if it's the most important thing per se. Height, body, these are important. I don't know why you put height above body. I would say like if your height is very, very short, it might be more important than body. Um, and I would also say, right, that um, if your body's really, really bad and you're really, really fat, it might be more important than height, right? Money, again, we kind of debunked his like money rating system. So like this number is going to be way off. This number is not going to really matter that much unless you're like below like a three. And then this number doesn't really matter at all. And so the only thing things that matter in this chart are like these three things, maybe this one. And then like, uh, if I were to add things like, so if I was to take this away, if I was to take this away, because we debunked that those two even really matter to begin with, it would be like status. And then it'd probably be, uh, actually, no, I wouldn't have a six one. It would just be status. And then for money, I would sub that with disposable income, right? And then for the weights of things, right? Like uh, realistically, this is gonna be like raised to the power of three. Uh, this would be probably raised to the power of two. This would probably be raised to the power of two. This would be probably raised to the power of two. And then like status would probably be raised to the power of two. And then like, I would say like probably gain, right? Power of two. So like your ability to like interact with people like socially, like so like your social skills and that sort of thing and like realizing when women like you and when they don't like you and uh, how to sort of proceed and get them to like escalate into being in a relationship or into like just hooking up or whatever. But like, yeah, it would probably be like game or like social skills or whatever. Um, but yeah, let's, let, let's, let's go on. And because obviously some factors such as face will affect your SMV a lot more than other factors such as IQ. Now, the weightings are factored in slightly different to how you might think. We are going to raise each of your scores to the power of the weight, not multiply. So face is raised to the power of 5, height is cubed, body squared, and so on. Yes. Yeah, like, let's just appreciate, right, for a moment, that one, he's using an iPhone, right? And so you, you want to use, like, a TI-83 or, like, the Google calculator for this because it's very complex, right? And order of operations is very important, right? But two, let's just appreciate how he has, he's sitting here, he's a black pill guy, He's not, that means he's not getting laid that much. That means he's not having any success with relationships. He's not having any success with dating. He's sitting here creating this theory using the geometrically average SMV, right? And he's plugging in all these numbers and he's making all these calculations, but he's not actually just going out and like talking to females, right? And so uh, for that, you know, that's pretty low IQ in my opinion. EMOTIONAL DAMAGE And uh, that, that shows like he This guy's super deficient in social skills Right And he's just super deficient at like Human interaction in general But let's continue so You will need a calculator for this And then once you've done this You're going to multiply All of these numbers together For your weighted total which should give you a large number with roughly 7 to 13 zeros. Then finally, you're going to take the 15th root, which was taken from the total weight here, of the big value. Yeah, uh, also, like, I feel like maybe he had, like, some sort of, like, advanced math class, or, like, maybe he's doing engineering, maybe he's doing just, like, a math degree or something, I'm not sure. Maybe he's majoring in statistics. 
Uh, but like he's like, oh yeah, bro, you, you could just take the 15th root of, uh, you know, like the 15th score, and then that's going to give you the total score. Like, you know, like this is ridiculous. Which will leave you with your geometrically averaged SMV. If you've done things correctly, you'd see a number between 1 and 8. Anyway, the reason we did all that multiplying and rooting instead of working out the average the regular way by adding everything together and dividing by the total weights was so that we could get the geometric mean instead of the arithmetic mean. What this basically helps out with is if you're lagging behind in a crucial area but doing good in all the others, hmm. your SMV will be lower compared with if you had an even distribution. Right off the rip, the guy on the right looks taller, okay? So I don't know if this height thing is really true. But like also, this guy just got a better haircut, bro. And then like, it also looks like his nose is like fucked up. I don't know if he broke his nose or something. But like, yeah, his nose is fucked up. He's got a big fucked up nose, right? Whereas this guy doesn't. But, like, I I would say even, like, also, like, this guy does not have a five in the face. This guy has, like, a six or a seven in the face. Like, look at his face. Look at his hairline. Look at everything. Just up here. This guy is probably like a six or a seven. Like, I don't know why this guy's being so harsh to this guy, but it's being so generous to the guys like that we previously saw. But like, you know, like this guy, right? He's like somebody's type. Like, so if somebody's type is all about the muscle and like the size of the muscle, whatever, then he's going to be fine. Especially if you just got like a better haircut, bro. And then, uh, you know, like if he didn't have this haircut, if he had his hair like parted or something and he didn't have the glass. Yeah, he has glasses. Okay, like in this part of the image, it doesn't look like he has glasses, but whatever. He maybe he just has like one glass. Um, you know, like if he just removed the glasses, or if he got like a full set of glasses or better glasses or something, and then um, you know, he probably looked better. And also, like it looks like his nose is broken or something. So like if he got it fixed, then uh, he, you know, like he'd probably be a little bit higher in the face. This is just like a bad picture overall though. So, uh, you know, like obviously like, this is just a body picture where he's like taking it in the mirror or like, you know, he's just flexing or whatever. He's not really like actively trying to look good per se. He's only trying to look good in the body. Whereas this guy is not trying to look good in the body at all. And he probably doesn't do any training. And, uh, you know, like he has probably better face than this guy. Like, let's keep it real of your ratings. For example, for the guys shown on the screen now, we'd expect Man 1's score to be lower as he is lacking in a crucial area. However, when we calculate their scores using the arithmetic weighted mean, this does not show the difference as they seem to be on the same level. But using the geometric weighted mean, this does show the man who has the fives across the board has a better score. And this makes sense from a logical point of view too, as women would be less likely to reject him as he's not being brought down by any one fact. Also, notice how I said earlier that like none of the other things matter except for face height and money. Not face height and money. Face height and body. And then like money maybe matters a little bit as well, right? You notice how I said that and then like for this example he only used face height and body. That means I was right. I called it like how I saw it, and I called it right. Face, height, and body are really all that matters. And then, like, money and status and stuff like that is going to be sort of ancillary. But, like, as long as your money count isn't, like, ridiculously low, and as long as you have, like, a decent amount of disposable income, it doesn't matter. And then, obviously... That I'm kind of seeing it like it looks like he's like kind of scarred up right here and right here like he he went through some shit right so maybe he maybe he broke his nose maybe this dude broke his nose like maybe he's like a fighter or something and he got fucked up in the nose I mean he might need some like nose surgery or like he might need something to to go on over there but like yeah if he just fixed this 
think he'd probably be higher than this guy, honestly. So, anyway, the final part of calculating your SMV is factoring in both ethnicity and location. Because, as controversial as this sounds, it is true that these factors impact how attractive you are perceived in the dating market. If you are white, add 0.5 points to your score. If you are black or Latino, your score will remain the same. If you are Indian or Asian, subtract one point from your score. Hold up. This is not a balanced RPG, okay? Look, okay? If you're Indian or you're Asian, you score in all these things. Don't, do not subtract one point from your score. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous, okay? As far as being black or Latino and like adding zero points, I would agree with that. But as far as being white, add zero points as well. As far as being Indian Asian, add zero points as well. Because, right? Well, first of all, we already established like these things don't really matter. Maybe they matter in a relationship, but it doesn't matter for like just like hooking up initially, right? But, you know, like as far as you being white, that, like, that's not going to give you like a better a better uh chance at anything really i mean like uh unless you're talking to somebody who's racist right so if you're talking to somebody who's racist and just like oh yeah like i i i'm not gonna get with the black guy or i'm not gonna get with the asian guy i'm not gonna get with the indian guy you know like whatever and second of all right black men right They're going to get rejected a lot more by, like, white people, I, I feel like, than, like, Indian or Asian people. And also, like, Latino people. Like, white, white people are more quick to get with Latino people and, like, Indian Asian people than they are to get with black people in, like, an actual relationship. And so, like, I feel like all these numbers are just wrong. Like, I don't know why you would give yourself, like, a plus point five point after taking the geometric mean by the way so this isn't before the geometric mean this is after the geometric mean to your score but okay as for location if you are in the west not in college slash uni subtract one point from your score if you're in the west at college add 0 0.5 points if you're in south america add 0 0.5 points if you are in Southeast Asia, add a point to your school. Yeah, and I feel like all of these are wrong as well. So, like, if you're in the West, or if you're in America, you're in the UK, whatever. He, said, he just says, flat out, subtract a point from your score. Why? I mean, is there easy, any reasoning as to why you would subtract a point from your score? Like, I, I guess the point here is that women are more choosy, but, like, if you're an eight in all of these categories... By his own theory, then you'd just be an eight all out. So even if you're an eight in all these categories, is he saying that you're a seven? Like that doesn't make any sense. If you're in college, right, and you're an eight in all these categories, are you gonna be like an eight point five out of eight? Like is that like the super max, like whatever? And then like if you're in college and you're in Southeast Asia, does that make you, instead of being 8.5, you're uh, 9.5 out of a system that only has 8 as the maximum? Right? So you went to, so you're from the West, you're like this Euro guy, right? Like you, you're, you're white, and, and then you have this as well. So that gives you, like, if you're an 8 in all categories, right? That gives you plus 2, plus 0.5, that's 10.5 total rating out of 8. Think about that. <laughs> but, like, you can't be, like, in both these countries at the same time. So, like, that really just gives you a 10 out of 8. Which means that this rating system is now out of 10. If you think about it, it's out of 10. But in order to get to 10, you have to be in college, white, and in Southeast Asia. Which is racist as fuck. But, okay. Anyway, this should leave you with your final result. This is your SMV. It shows roughly what your dating value is compared to the other men around you. We can then backtest your score to our original mapping to show what percentile of men you fall. So if you scored an 8, you are likely in the top 1% of men. 7 means top 10%, 5 
6 top 25, you get the idea. And to show you how accurate this system is, I'll show you what my SMV is using this formula. So I'm roughly a... I don't know. I don't care. I don't care where this guy's self-rated SMV is because, like, obviously he's going to be biased. He's probably going to rate himself, like, 7 or something. And it's like, you know, he's a pasty white gender. He's skinny. Right? Like, and he might be a lot of girls' cup of tea, you know? Like, so I'd probably rate this guy, like... Laser eye rating, I don't know, like six or seven. I don't know. I'm being nice to him. Let's six see what he gets in the himself. face, but probably closer to a five than seven. So we'll say five Love. ratings, giving a 130k net worth, 12 percent body fat percentage, five ten. He took a official IQ test. I'm trying to just like skip through this because this video is gonna be too long. Yes, this is how my score could be affected at various oh, piece root, as that is our total weight. And this gives me an initial SMV score of 5.726. And as promised, for those. So he has like a 5.726, whatever. And that's what he rates himself. So that's above whatever the average is. The average is like five, I would assume. Those that are curious, this is how my score could be affected at various P sizes. Here, you can read this and another half point from being at a university campus. This leaves my final SMV as 6.726. Yeah, so he rated himself pretty much a seven out of eight. And somehow he's still black pill. And somehow he is still, uh, like making all this incel adjacent content and like doing a bunch of bullshit. So how the fuck is this guy seven point six, seven point six, six point seven out of eight, out of eight? By the way, so like that would put him right because in his standards, right, seven is not like oh, okay, it's the top like twenty something percent. Right, or the top like twelve and a half percent, whatever the fuck. Right, it's not that; it's the top ten percent is a seven. Right, and now he's not touching that per se. Right, but he's in between that and the top twenty five percent. Top twenty five percent is a six, so he puts himself in the top fifteen percent. But he's a black pill content creator, and he's kind of an incel, low key. So he puts himself at 6.7 and he's an incel. Okay. Okay, guy. Maybe instead of having this, you should have put like social uh, skills and you should have rate yourself a fucking zero because that's what you are. Emotional damage. But, you know, that's it for today's video. I'm Netboy Kyrie and uh, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe.